morning, 10.30, will you stand and join us as we prepare to sing? Hey, this song is all about expectancy, asking God to do things that we know he can do. Amen? Prayer this morning. We'll sing it. We've waited for this day. Here we go. We've waited for this day. We're gathered in your name, calling out to you. Your glory awakening desire will burn our hearts with you. See, you're the reason. Because you're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens. We want to see it. Open up the floodgates. A mighty river that's flowing from your heart. that we get to come together and just praise the Lord in the house of God. And we're so thankful for this time and we're thankful for all of you being
at the way to the glory of the risen king. Let's sing this out. Here we go. I needed a rescue. My sin was heavy. Chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter. I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen. Come on. When I was broken, you were my healing. Through your love is the
was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Hallelujah. Christ is risen from the grave. Hallelujah. Christ is risen from the grave. God who died came back to life and everything has changed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen from the grave. Hallelujah.
know you more and more, Jesus. That is our goal, God. That is our prayer this morning. Would you draw closer to us, God? So we be conformed into your image, Jesus. Jesus. Be just like you. Thankful that your spirit is moving right now, God, and that you are here with us. The living God, the creator of all things, is here with us right now as we worship you. Be glorified, God. Take this offering of praise, Jesus. Be pleased, Jesus. We love you, God, and we worship you. We praise you. We pray all these things in your name. Everybody say. Thank you, Hannah. Amen. All right. Well, let's talk. 
let's talk we, about fixing stuff. We need stuff fixed. And teens, off you go. Jerry, fix it. Okay? Thank you, buddy. That's the hardest fix right there with teenagers, right? Yeah. Oh, boy. Amen. We got great teenagers here, let me tell you. They love the Lord. They serve the Lord. Okay, let's be clear about something. When a man says, listen up, ladies. When a man says, <clears throat> I'm going to fix it, he will. Stop reminding him every six months. Is this on over here, over here? I don't think this was on over here. Let's make something clear. Isn't that just like our state of mind is often we, uh, we want to, but we never get around to it, fixing things in our lives. Uh, like I told you, the Holy Spirit is transforming us, some easier than others, into the image of Christ. Often I tell people, look, in the life we walk on this earth until Jesus comes, we need to get a sign, like a sandwich sign, you know? Put it, on our, put it on us that says, pardon the mess still under construction. Isn't that the truth? It's a process. It's a process that, toward perfection, which will come when we see Jesus and we'll be in our glorified bodies perfect. Until then, it's a process. And we can use all the tools the Bible has for us to keep our faith strong, to keep our character clean, to keep us in the light as he is in the light, right? So with that... I've been talking about getting stronger in faith and how to fix it because we can't sustain walking on this earth with weak faith. It, it, it's just a terrible way to go. You don't want to do that when strong faith is available for a victorious life. Now, how many here would agree with me that strong faith is better than weak faith? Right? I mean, is that pretty easy? $100 is better than $10. Oh, now I got your attention. Okay. All right. Now you're with me. Now you're with me. Why? Why do we need stronger faith? Why do we need our faith growing? Because it makes for a better walk with God. It uh, gives us a greater revelation of God and who he is. The Bible says that God reveals himself to us as we go from faith to faith to faith. He won't reveal himself in such a fashion that he would with stronger faith. Do you see that? In other words, uh, a geometry teacher isn't going to try to teach a two-year-old geometry until he can graduate up and get past the one plus one. So we need stronger faith in our lives. And I'm giving you the fix. Well, how to fix weak faith. Anytime you want to put that up there would be a good time Rhonda, and by the way, welcome back. Okay? Still not up there, but you're still welcome back. Okay. <laughs> Fix it. That's what we're going to do. When you see that, you're going to shout what? Fix it. All right. One way we fix weak faith is by prayer. We talked about this already. Prayer strengthens faith. It'll fix a weak faith state. Uh, Jude verse 20 tells us what? Build up your most holy Faith by what? Prayer. Praying in the Spirit. So we see prayer will build up your most holy faith. So the simplest way to increase your faith is by prayer. Just increase the volume of praying. I suggest that we do what they did in the Old Testament and what many of the Jews do today. They're required to pray three times a day. Come to God three times a day. And that wouldn't hurt us. I'm not saying you're required to do anything. We're set free by the blood of the Lamb. So you can go as many times to the Lord as you want, but three would definitely be a minimum, morning, noon, and night. Just doing that alone will change, will renovate some parts of your life. Just doing that alone, increasing your prayer, prayer life, praying more. What am I going to pray about? I run out of things to pray. Really? Well, what about the tragedy that happened? Just turn on the TV and look at the news and pray. How about prayers of adoration? How about that list you have that you haven't looked at in six months? 
a prayer list of little Uncle Johnny that needs, there's an alcoholic that needs to get saved and converted, and the different things of finances and your marriage and all kinds of things on that. Pray it every day, and then spirit-led prayers as God drops things into your mind and into your heart to pray for. How about prayers of adoration? How about just saying once in a while, Jesus, you're awesome. You're majestic in all your ways. I love you. Lift your hands and say you love Jesus to him. Say, I love you, Jesus. And you just got a faith bump. The disciples said to Jesus, increase my faith, our faith. So you can pray for faith increase. Lord, increase my faith that my faith will not fail. What's wrong with these prayers? Nothing. So increase Increase your, and that's the easiest way to do it because you can pray anytime, anywhere. It takes 30 seconds, and you can, in, in Walmart, you better be praying when you go in Walmart. It's not funny. Something's wrong. Something desperately is wrong, and it's the devil. And we need to protect our, Lord, I pray for a hedge of protection around Prescott Valley and the Tri-City area, in Jesus' mighty name. And that the churches would get off the couch and begin to pray humbly before God and band together, we can drive the devil out in Jesus' mighty name. But one church is concerned about this church doing that and that church doing that. Oh, my gosh. It's like being back in kindergarten. I'm just sick of it. We just... You know, we're over the banner of love and Jesus Christ. That's why I love taking communion, because any denomination won't refute it. And it brings us all to the table together in Jesus' name. I'm not worried about speaking in tongues and not speaking in tongues and fighting over uh, this scripture, that scripture, and what Revelation says. You know something? Uh, what, what matters is where you are, w w what are you doing with Jesus and are we reaching out to get other people uh, uh, under the cover of heaven, saved? Isn't that what matters? Anyway, I didn't mean to go on that little rant. Uh, prayer strengthens faith. And what else strengthens faith? God's word. God's word. Romans 10, 17. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the more you get into the word, the stronger your faith. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. I will promise you, the more you get into this word, and you might fight it at first, but pretty soon you're going to consume it like honey. You'll consume it. You won't be able to put it down. Get rid of the romance novel and pick up this novel. There's a romance, romance novel right here. God loves you. He's speaking to us in his word. Remember what I told you about Bibles in your house? What did I tell you about Bibles in your house? Keep them open. Keep them open. Well, I only have one. Well, keep that one open, then grab two or three more, especially if you're going through trials and troubles. Put it in every room. Teresa, you should have one in every room, not you're going through anything, but because of who you're married to. He's under attack. No, 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 no. He's under attack because he serves this pastor. He's under attack all the time. He reads. He reads the Word of God. He spoons, feeds us the Word of God. There's the open Bible right there. Why not? Why not? An open Bible in your house is better than a shut one. Why? Because an open Bible will call you to it. God's Word speaks, and the Holy Spirit will call you to his word and if you're going through something no matter what room you go into there's an open bible open bible open bible open bible what's god trying to tell me get into the word he'll meet you in the book of psalm he'll meet you in the book of matthew he'll meet you meet you in the book of acts and speak to you by his spirit and reveal things in this book there's your counselor. Why wouldn't you have this counseling book open? Why wouldn't you have this salvation book open? Healing book open. Delivering book open. Provision, provision comes from the word. Have it open. And reap the benefits. Stronger faith. 
in Jesus' name. Now, we're going to get into therapy. I don't want to take too much time, but we all need it. You all need therapy. And I'm talking about word therapy. Therapy is meant to make something that is weak, strong. Am I right? If you have a weak elbow, you get into therapy and they work it. And they work it. If you have weak faith, you get into word therapy and you work it. And you work it. It becomes strong. So let's get into it. Hallelujah. Did you hear what I said, uh, Rhonda? We're getting into therapy. It's therapy time, saints. So let's do it. Put up the scriptures that I gave out last week. Here's some word therapy we're going to do together. You ready? I'll give you the address. You speak the word of God out loud. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. This is a faith builder. You're in therapy for crying out loud. Here it is. You're going to get stronger. 1 Peter 2.24, go. Philippians 4.19, Proverbs 3, 5. Hebrews 13, 5. And Psalm 46, 1. Isn't that beautiful? What did that take? 30 seconds? Minute max? And I handed these out last week. I don't know if we have any more left or not. Um... I don't see any ushers. Okay. Uh, if we have some, we'll have them available for you. But I handed out 200 of these last week. And it's important. We also have, oh, we also, when it comes to prayer, I also have the prayer, the hedge prayer for the prayer of protection. That's a powerful prayer to pray every morning to protect you, especially when school is beginning. You pray that to protect your children, a hedge of protection around them while you send them off to school in the danger zone. You get a hedge of protection. This is found in Job chapter 1. Shall we pray it together right now? Would you mind if we took a second and prayed this together? I don't think it could hurt, could it? Okay, let's lift our hands again and pray this together. We're still in therapy. All right. Oh, Lord, build a hedge about me and my house and about all I have on every side. Bless the work of my hands and increase my substance in the land. Cause not the wicked to stretch forth their hands to touch me in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Touch me, my children, my home, my pets, my, my possessions in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. And we'll have that available for you. And uh, on your way out, you can put that in your house up on the wall. Uh, it, will, it won't fit in with my decor. Aww. The Word of God doesn't fit in with your decor. Well, I can put it on pink paper if you want. Hallelujah. Yeah, in the, if it's in just right. All right, here we go. We're still in therapy. Ten-finger faith drill. You ready? Ten-finger faith word drill. Philippians 4.13. Each word, there's ten words. Every time you say one word of God's Word, you put up one finger. When you put up your tenth finger, that's going to be the word me. You say it with victory. You ready? Both hands up in the air, closed. One finger up for each word. Go. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There you go. You just fixed some things in your life right there. You just built some faith. Woo. Woo. Okay, therapy is over. Off you go. Now let me get back to my message. Okay, here is another tool in God's toolbox to renovate your life to get getting stronger faith. It's um, getting stronger faith by giving, tithing, and serving God. Three in one. The big, I call them the big three. Here we go. Second Thessalonians 1-3. King James, please. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is meet, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. By the charity and love they had for one another, giving to each other those that are in, were in need, their faith grew exceedingly. Do you see it there? 
So stronger faith comes by charity, love, giving. That's what charity is, giving. Whether you're giving your love and compassion to somebody or you're giving something tangible, a bag of groceries, uh, some money, whatever that need might be, by doing it, by being led by the Holy Spirit and doing it, you are increasing your faith. You're taking a step. You're taking what you have and giving some of that to somebody else that, that doesn't have. I know we've been taught, we've been taught to keep everything. Get what you can, put it in a can, and then sit on the can. That's what you've been taught. But God says something different. Give all you can, and I will replenish it so you can give some more. In so doing, you are building your faith. You are fixing something in your heart called love toward other people. God's love gives. For God so loved the word that he, oh, that he gave. So love gives charity, and it will increase your faith. I, I've told this story before a long, long time ago, but it came to me to tell it again because it ties in with what I'm talking about here. A, a great while back, I had a businessman that went to the church and very successful, and he came uh, to my office and wanted to talk for a few minutes. So we got a cup of coffee and just sat down and began to talk. And he said, Pastor, I, I feel dead. I feel uh, there's no passion anymore. I, I, I feel like uh, I'm getting worried about stuff, and, and I just don't feel the Lord's presence like I used to. I said, those are all symptoms of weak faith, my friend. We need, to go, we need to fix that and go from weak to strong faith. Because he was a great man of faith. But, you know, the world and issues of life and drama has a way of wearing you down. Doesn't it? Let's be honest. Life's every day, the journey and issues and twists and turns has a way to wear your faith down. That's why we need to keep building it up every day. Prayer, the word, and by helping others. Giving to others. So I told this man, I said, huh, no passion, no excitement. Yeah, that's weak faith. We need to get strong faith going. And I'll tell you what you do. And I pulled out a, a little piece of paper. I said, you're, you're doing pretty well in your business. God's blessed you. Why don't you go buy $200 worth of groceries and take it to this address to this family who's really struggling? What? This is going to do it? I, I just, just go get the groceries. You shop for it. Don't send one of your people. And don't send your secretary over there to do, your, to do it. You do it yourself. And take it over there and tell him it's from Jesus in the name of the Lord. He did it. And he said, Pastor, I've never had a lift like that before when I handed that food. And he could certainly afford it to those people and to see those kids jump up and down because he bought a box of Twinkies stayed in my mind that was a faith increase for, for that man he went from zero empty to full-on faith because of giving thinking of others and not yourself corporately we've been blessed here in this church because we're a giving church not only thanks during thanksgiving time when we help 14 1500 families with a full thanksgiving dinner we gave out a 1,000 coats and so much more. But on a weekly basis, we give out many, many dozens and dozens of bags of food. Three tables are full. You'll see it on your way out. We put another table up because of your great uh, abundance that you brought and your love of giving. Each one of you, and some of you forgot. This is not a no shame on you. I'm just saying. Each one of you that brought food, that remembered to bring food, and you took the time to buy it, set it aside, put it in the bag, and bring it, knowing it's going to help someone less fortunate. And you laid it on that table. As soon as you put it down, faith rise right there. Increase faith right there. And it goes in our food bank next door, and collectively at a, uh, as a church, our faith is strong because we help people all the time. Not patting anybody on the back except Jesus. I'm just telling you, giving will increase faith. Tithing will increase faith. Did you know that? 
Malachi, in the book of Malachi, it says bring all the tithe, not half, not some, not a portion. Many of us think we're, when it comes to giving to God, we're at Denny's and we leave a tip. He's not your waitress. He's your God. And he deserves your very best. And the tithe is the tithe. I make no apologies for it. And God comes first. We need to take God off the bottom of your budget and put him at the top of your budget where he belongs. And the rest of the budget underneath it will be just fine in excess. How many knows what, what I'm talking about? Have you found that to be true? Say yes or no. It is true. And it fixes things in our lives. It fixes the greed of money. It fixes the lack of trust. Because tithing is a trust issue. Look at the, look at the uh, scripture. Go ahead. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. Now that's a promise. That's a promise. Does God lie? That's a promise that if you bring the tithe in, that he's asked you to do the tenth of your increase, of your income. Well, I can't afford it. You can't afford not to. I'd rather have, but what, that, what does that leave me? 90%. I'd rather have 90% to use that's blessed than 100% to use that's cursed. I read a survey that says that most churches have an average of 40 to 50% tithers. I said to myself, are you kidding me? So I called my accountant. Yep, that's about right. What? Maybe I don't teach it enough. Maybe we don't understand God's way. And then, and then I wonder why people call me and say they're in this mess and that financial mess. and that. I guess I should be asking them, do you tithe? I guess if you tithe, it says the floodgates will open. Then you'll have more than you can bear. It's a trust issue. Can you see where it's a trust issue? Are we going to trust him by giving the tithe and test him? Well, I don't know if I can do that. Well, he says, test me. doesn't even take. Here it is. You're not going to like it. It doesn't even take faith to tithe because he says, test me in this. Well, I don't believe it. I'm not supposed to. Just test me in this. And then once you do it, blessings will come and faith will just zoom. Faith will be a zoomer. You know what a zoomer is? Dogs go like this all over the place. That's what your faith is going to be doing. I always tell a story. I, I like this one the best about uh, two guys on a boat and began to sink. So they had to swim for it. They went to this island, this deserted island, and uh, in the middle of nowhere. Their phones don't work, nothing. One guy's really upset, doesn't know what we're going to do. The other guy's calm, and he's relaxing and eating, a, drinking out of a coconut. How can you be so relaxed? You don't understand. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a very successful businessman in the church we go to. I tithe $5,000 a week. My pastor will find me. My pastor will find me. And can't you see that pastor out there? Okay, let's go find him. Let's, where is he? Uh, that was supposed to be funny. But there's some truth in that, isn't it? Yeah, there's some truth in that. Uh, let's look at this scripture uh, about serving God. Serving God. Uh, 1 Timothy 3.13. Serving God will increase your faith. Take a, if you are suffering from weak faith, worry, doubt, fear, take a position in the church. I'm telling you. Ushers, greeters, teachers, helpers, cleaners, bus drivers, musicians, singers. It will increase your faith. Go ahead. Those who have served well gain an excellent standing and great assurance in their faith in Christ Jesus. They have a great assurance. Those that serve have an excellent standing with God and with man, but also they have a great assurance. The King James says a great boldness. Let me tell you something. Weak faith doesn't have bold. It's not bold. Strong faith is bold. When you serve God, bold faith will come on you. In other words, it will increase by serving God. Isn't that amazing? 
It will fix a lot of things. Just start serving God. But my, my life isn't perfect. It's not going to be perfect. Jump in. Roll up your sleeves. Start serving God, and there, an unspeakable joy will come over you. Well, how much does it pay? It doesn't pay nothing. But the benefits are out of this world. See, that's just it. We've been taught, don't do anything for nothing. And that's why we don't do anything. But there is something when you, when you serve God and you do it with gladness. You get the respect of people and of God. And you get bold faith, bolder faith, a faith increase. Here's another tool on the tool chest. And I'm going to close. And I'll save the third one for next week because it's a big one. <clears throat> Getting stronger in faith through trials, troubles, and tribulations. <laughs> Can you imagine? Getting stronger faith through trials, troubles, and tribulations. Now I know why, jo why James said, consider a pure joy when you go through trials, troubles, and tribulations. Why? Because it increases your faith. Yes. Now I know. Wow, see how you learn these things? Uh, look at this one. 1 Peter 1 7 in LT, please. 1 Peter 1 7. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold through your faith, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. So first of all, it says trials are going to come. Jesus said, in this world you will have trouble. It's for a reason he allows it, to increase our faith, to refine us, to make us better, not bitter. It's training for reigning. And, and uh, so they're going to come. If, if you're not experiencing any, any drama right now, you will. <clears throat> you should be in my office for one day. It's drama, drama, drama. But, you know, I love people, and we work through it in the name of Jesus, and, and they leave with stronger faith every single time. Why? Because I pray with them. Because I open the word with them. Because I tell them. Do something around here. Serve God. Yes. Hallelujah. And that increases faith. Look at First Thessalonians. Oh, the other thing I want to show you here before we go to the next one is, is a testing of your faith. It purifies your faith like gold. But faith is even more important and more precious than gold. Your faith will remain strong when it goes through that type of purifying which is trials, troubles, and tribulations. It builds it up. It builds your faith up. And it will bring much praise. I like this. And it will bring much praise and glory from Jesus. It's one of the few places here that talks about Jesus praising you. Because we've been taught to praise him. But here, he praises you when your faith is strong. Strong faith will bring the praise of God to you. Hallelujah. 1 Thessalonians 3, 7, the NLT. So we have been greatly encouraged in the midst of our troubles and suffering, dear brothers and sisters, because you have remained strong in your faith. They're going through trouble, but they're encouraged. You can get great encouragement by prayer and by the Word and by serving by giving to others, and you will remain strong when you do those things. When you use the tools, you get renovated. They're God tools. They're powerful tools. You can't do it from a self-help book, although the Bible is the greatest self-help book. We get our help from above, from God. I can't help myself, but God can help me, right? If I use the right tools, I'll have stronger faith. And those tools I just gave you are giving, tithing, and serving God Almighty. In Jesus' name, prayer, God's Word. Open your Bible. Get into Word Therapy every day. I'm trying to help you. I want you to win on the battlefield of life. I want to get you to the place where when a trouble 
calls on the phone and you don't even flinch. You just pop another gospel. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now let me ask you. You've been talking about trials, troubles, and tribulations. It's going to come. Jesus said, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. We all experience it. It's, it's how we face it. It's how we endure it that matters, right? That's what matters. I can get a flat tire and be singing praises to God while I'm changing it. You can get a flat tire and be praising Cain. Same flat tire, different attitudes toward it. Let's have the right attitude. And that attitude can be shaped by God Almighty. He can't shape my hand. Yes, he can. The Bible says, take on the mind of Christ. Do that by prayer and the word. Giving, helping others less fortunate than you. It, do you see where that would give you a faith boost? Faith boost? No, I can't get it. The word's out. That's all right. Pastor's funny. I know. I know. Let's stand in the presence of Almighty God. I know we have a few pastors here this morning and some chaplains here. We'd be glad and our privilege to pray with you. If you find yourself going through a trial or trouble, take heart. Consider it pure joy, the Bible says. It's doing something in you. It's establishing endurance, patience, and stronger faith. Who's going through a trial or trouble this morning? Just raise your hand. Let me see somebody raising their hands. Yes, sir. Yes, back there. Two over here. One back there. Want this lady back here, halfway back. All right. The rest of you aren't, and that's fine. You will. So maybe next week you'll raise your hand, and we'll pray for what you're going through. But right now we have several going through something. We all go through things because we're needy. Is that right, sir? I want to see that arm all well and healed. And are you in therapy? Why are you in therapy? To make you stronger. See what I mean? Are you getting it? light bulb we get into word therapy and we get stronger in faith amen well i don't need anything i like people who say that i just tell them take a deep breath take one deep breath and hold it till tomorrow oh you need air oh i didn't know i thought you said you didn't need anything we are needful people we have needs all the time and we have one that provides all our needs his name is jesus you get out of your chair come forward we have pastors and chaplains here. We want to pray with you right now. Don't leave if you need prayer. I beseech you, come forward. Come forward right now. If you need prayer. If your life needs a fix. Well, that could sound pretty, uh, pretty, uh, I could get in trouble for that if you need a fix. But we need a fix and his name is Jesus. We need a fix and it's the word of God. We need a fix and it's prayer. We need a fix and it's giving. We need to fix this serving. Come on, let's get let's get busy here. Anybody else need need prayer? Come forward, get a fix. <laughs> I know if that's funny saying that, but I love it. I love it's God. Come forward and get a fix. Amen. An injection of the Holy Ghost. All right, let me pray for you, Father. I pray for these now. Before they leave this place, they'll commit to, to uh, pray more, getting into the Word more, and especially going home and opening their Bibles. In Jesus' name. And may they serve you the rest of their lives. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Go in peace.